And uh, <laughs> I would argue right now with private equity and what's going on, that's one of the more interesting things going on in our industry right now. And I'll also I'm bringing up Greg Martin. Greg Martin is the president of the Ray Morgan Company. They have been a long time Canon partner. He, when I thought about this presentation, you don't just want to hear me talk about it. This guy, he's not like it, became a multimillionaire when he recently sold his business with his partners. Merged. 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 He, like, he calls it merged. I say sell. Partnership. Uh, to Umeo, which is Sentinel Partners also. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So please take a seat, Greg, so you can be, you can be comfortable. So there we go. First slide, please. So as Sam mentioned, um, we're obviously very proud of this. Uh, we continue to grow. You know, as you do this for a long time, you have to challenge yourself. And so one of the things is we're challenging ourselves to try to grow 10 years in a row with the independent dealer channel. And as you know, it's not that easy. Global Xerox bought so many of our dealers and a lot of them are joining private equity and KM, Rick Taylor, they bought one of our good dealers in Vermont. And so there are a lot of challenges out there. Even with that, you know, kind of uh, quiet Canon continues to do okay uh, with the dealer channel. And as you see, grew 2% last year, and uh, everyone claims different things. This is revenue. This is revenue growth, and we'll go into other. And that was growing the revenue 4% on machine and accessories, and we shrunk 2% on aftermarket, just so you know. So that's the makeup of it. But thank God the hardware is such a big part that it got us to the 2%. And uh, again, seventh year of steady growth. We have many channels, um, like to highlight the federal channel. We grew double digit uh, the year before last. We were able to follow that up with growing 3%. I don't see much written about that. A lot of our competitors are pulling out of the government space because it's not that profitable. And so they're pulled out. And so we're actually upping our game a little bit there um, with, with that. And so that's a good area for us. And then I don't, you know, there's good and bad in life. And anyone who gets up here and just says, everything's wonderful, this crew, that crew, da, 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 da. Our distributor retailer side was down 3% last year. And so that's Staples, Office Depot, Amazon. That's selling our scanners, our wide format, and our Sobo printers. That's what we do. And that's hundreds of millions of dollars every year. And so that's an area that we're looking to beef up and get back to the growth side. But there's been a bit of a challenge in that area. And I know some of you more cover that area than the, than the dealer side of it. But overall, as Sam mentioned, 1% uh, revenue growth is what we did as a group last year. So uh, we're very pleased with that. Uh, thank you. I read your stuff when it comes to my email and I'm going to use some of your figures when I compare them to our, our figures, meaning you guys do Xerox. And so I got it. What you say, I assume is true. So, um, you know, overall, it's a pretty easy compare if you, if you look at the revenue. I know that I read your stuff and it said Xerox equipment sales in the fourth quarter was down 9.5%. So uh, we're growing equipment sales very strongly. So as a compare and contrast, on the uh, you know on the on the on the side where you're dealing with the distribution, you tend to be a little bit competitive, right? And so we do that. These are the figures on in a little more detail than what Sam had. I don't know. Do I have a pointer here? I do actually. That's nice. I like to point out again, the same article that one of you was nice enough to write that I read during the break. Um, on the production side, you see Canon toner cut sheet color unit sales up 31%, black and white up 23%. If you read the Xerox, which you guys analyzed for me, uh, they said black and white down 34%, color down 12%. So to me, that's a real compare and contrast. And in our dealer business, in our, in our business overall, if you're not doing well with production, you're gonna struggle to grow. So that to me is kind of maybe the most uh, significant thing. You see, we're investing a lot in that area um, and we're gonna continue to do that. So unit sales, again, very, very strong. We're very, very proud of what we accomplished. And again, you guys are gonna prove to us that the percentage 
of share that we have is going to be improving. And some of our competitors, I find it really funny because I read the quarterly reports on everybody, audited financials, and I do have some friends who are accountants and they read it too. It's funny how they can always say that they're growing their unit so well, yet the finance, the revenue, and the things they put in their reports, it looks like they're going down. So I don't know, maybe I'm just not that good with math, but we're very careful about we, what we do as a publicly traded company and all. We're, we're very honest. Sometimes that's, uh, I think generally that's good in life. Um, look at politics right now, maybe not. But anyway, <laughs> they don't like me to talk about politics, so I will do that. Wow. <laughs> 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 Well, it's going to be a long time soon. So, be, be the the <laughs> so we have many challenges out there. And these are some I'd like to point out in my area. So I think uh, you've heard earlier from a number of people about it's an industry with people. It's a people-to-people -people business. And attracting the changing workforce to our industry is probably the number one challenge that we have in the, in the dealer channel, right? The millennials and people younger than that, and even people one generation above that, don't necessarily want to go into our industry. So Canon has, has done a lot. We have dealer leadership institutes and, and all kinds of training we do for our people, but I would like to ask the press, please make our industry look a little more sexy. <laughs> get, you know, get, get, get the people to want to go into it would be greatly appreciated. Um, obviously, as you've heard, we're all fighting decline in paper volume, and cost per copy, which we, which we have to outrun. So, right, the amount of volume that people are doing on equipment in the enterprise side is going down a little bit. And because there's so many competitors out there, it's a very competitive industry, the cost per copy goes down a little bit. So that's a challenge. Again, production is really helping us uh, outrun that a little bit, but, but that's a real challenge. Uh, continued push to color solutions and higher volume users, right? That, that's really where the money is and where we want our people to go, but it's, it's not some kind of hidden sauce, right? Everybody knows that, so everyone's going there. And then the fourth point is kind of diversification. Sam showed earlier, Canon's trying to push our, our dealers and other people into those directions. A lot, you go to any of these, everyone talks a little bit differently. You know, some people are a little more aggressive. We're actually still very bullish on the overall print market. But certainly, you know, it's always good in business to add new products and services to use your core capabilities. But probably the biggest challenge, and challenges are often, you know, if you challenge yourself to run a marathon and you complete it without having a heart attack and dying, then you will have accomplished a lot. It was a big challenge and, and it's really good. So our challenge right now is the influx of private equity money into the channel. So it's a little different, right? We all went, I can see a lot of you out there, we all went through uh, Icon, Danka, Global, and they wanted to have a national footprint so they could deal with the big accounts out there. And back then, you could still make money off the big accounts. Not so easy to make money off the big accounts because they often are the most demanding. Thank you very much. We love you. And, uh, <laughs> um, but it is true on that. So. Um, the, I've gone around and I've met with uh, five of the private equity companies, the actual people with the money. And what I've learned from them is it's about money. You give, they get $2 from somebody and five years later that person wants back $4. And if you get them back 4 or $5, they're gonna give them seven and then they want 10 in a few more years. So that's the game, right? It's all about there's so much money in this great country of ours that the rich people have that they need to invest it somewhere. And if you put it in your local bank account, you're not gonna make the kind of returns that people want. So those are our challenges. And we're seeing the major buying group, uh, Oval Partners, two really nice guys who met at Stanford Business School, their Flex Technology Group. We've had a number of dealers bought by them. Marco, out of the Midwest, they're aggressively buying dealers with Norwest Equity Partners, who actually owns, owns them. You know, Visual Edge, again, a lot of nice people trying to do nice things. They're buying 
who they recently, they recently brought a Zeno of Texas, which was one of our dealers in the last couple months. Um, and of course, I'll, I'll, I'm going to do Greg's last, but uh, Staples, Staples, great partner of Cam, right? For years, what a great partner. We had PC copiers, hundreds of millions of dollars we would do with them every year. Good people to do business with. You know, Ascendant was a about a billion dollar purchase they recently made to get more into the office supply side of it. They're actually bought by Sycamore Partners, right? Own Staples. They bought them a while ago. And while I don't mean to pick on any of you, but sometimes we write a little negative about this industry. And I get your stuff every day and I'm reading it and it's sometimes a little bit negative, which I understand. And I have kind of a bipolar life, it seems like. Then I go and visit these private equity people and they're incredibly positive about our industry and about the dealer business and about how profitable it is and what a nice, what, they said, what genius came up with this recurring revenue <laughs> model? And it, it was Xerox, actually, to give them, give them all the credit, right? They set up a beautiful business that we're all still living off of. So, you know, there's just a lot of action. These people who are smart with a lot of money are busy buying up our dealers. And no one can get up here and say, this is what's going to happen. And everyone wants, you know, uh, brilliant insight. We'll know in three to five years. Let's see what happens, right, on it. Right now, uh, we're encouraged. The good side is they have money. They have lots of money. They're making our partners who, one good thing, not just get up here, oh, yeah, they're our partner, they're our partner. And half the time, no one means it. But we actually work with these guys for so many years. It makes us happy when, if they choose to cash out of it, that they, uh, they live the American dream. It really does. So we're seeing that with a lot of our dealers, and that's a great thing about this industry, right, on that. So um, the fact that there is money out there is, is wonderful for the people, right? On the negative, you know, we don't want one home to acquire half our distribution and then sell it to somebody we don't like, right? That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be good. So that's the nervousness. But that's why you get out of bed every day in the morning, and, you know, it's always a new day. But so far, so good. So better than have me talk about it, Greg Martin. I'm going to ask him some questions in a minute, but uh, Ray Morgan Company. They're our number one Canon dealer in the West. They're our second largest dealer overall. Uh, Greg and Jim Scarf, they come from Chico, California at one time. They were a relatively small Canon dealer and they built it up and it's a great American success story. And uh, let me introduce Greg Martin. So. Well, thank you, Nixon. Uh, first of all, I want to say a big thank you. Um, as you all probably know, about 10 miles from our office and where I live is paradise. And we had that devastating campfire. Uh, Patricia, Frank and CJ, Andy, um, you know, Sam and Mason, the other Canon people, and a lot of other people have supported us. We've, uh, with your help, have raised $600,000. And that has made a huge difference in our employees. We had 17 uh, employees, families either displaced or lose their home. And it's made an awesome difference in with our employees and the community. So thank you guys for that. Could you tell us the history of the Ray Morgan Company, your role in yeah. connection with Canon? Sure. Um, yeah, uh, Ray Morgan started uh, in 1956. Uh, you know, and if you see the the evolution of our industry, there's still a lot of the the 3M dealers that have grown into different types of businesses. Lake, you know, uh, Jack Slattery, a lot of other people have. Um, so he started then. Uh, I came on board in 1980. And I came on board at the same time, and the reason I was hired, we had three sales reps in the company, I was the fourth rep, and I was the Canon guy. Well, and it took about a month for me outselling the rest of the sales force for the, all the three of guys to get Canon in their arsenal too, but that was our start with Canon. It's been, a, it's been, you know, we throw around the word partnership. It has been a great partnership. We've gone from three or four reps to, you know, over 100 today and 18 branches, and it's, it's been a wonderful, uh, uh, partnership and growth and and you know 
it's a great time. I always say, I seem to say it every year, it's a great time to be in this business. And, you know, some of the things we've been able to do is invest in our people, invest in technology, ride the, you know, ride the wave of what Canon has been introduced and we've embraced it wholeheartedly. So, um, uh, we're, we're looking forward to future growth and uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. What distinguishes Ray Martin from your competitors in your marketplace? Well, I, I think it is technology. Um, it, it, we invested early in it um, and we lost money. I mean, we bought a company, a, a, a company that did a lot of different things that we thought were going to be great for us and it was a big loss. I mean, to look at Jim Scarf every day and go, why did we buy that company? But what we lost in revenue, we gained in our technology division. We started adding people. And so we invested in people, invested in technology. Uh, I would say one of our big difference makers is Uniform. It's been great. Um, we, uh, I think in the last 12 months, I counted over uh, a dozen $250,000 wins, and Uniflow was at the forefront of that. It's, it's a great product. Thank you, Karsten. We'll have a drink tonight. Uh, you know, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, the integration that Uniflow has uh, with the firmware is a real difference maker. Um, we just won a million dollar university deal, um, and Uniflow is one of the key reasons. Um, NTWare has been a great partner. They've really helped us with some customization and working with them. Um, and you know our ability to attract network and software uh, type of individuals to help our team, along with our sales force, has been has been a great win. Okay, um, switching gears a little bit now on the private equity side, of what drove your recent decision to partner up with private equity in general? Well, we've you know people have been knocking on our doors. If you listen to the rumor mill, you know Ray Morton Company's been bought and sold a hundred times. And uh, the last year, Jim is, uh, my partner's 73 years old, we said, oh, let's listen. So we talked to several, but what we really liked about UBO was, number one, they're, they're great people, um, they're successful people, they're winners, um, and we, we got to, I think, the best of both worlds. Uh, we took some money off the table, it was great for Jim, um, but probably more importantly was the culture we were able to retain our cultural, have a strong equity position going forward, and have the resources to grow. I mean, we passed on a couple deals that if we had some more financial backing, we would have uh, we would have acquired those companies. And so we're in a growth mode, and uh, it's a lot of fun, and I see a lot of success. And I'll use the word entrepreneurship. I'm, I'm I don't know what I'm not sure what Staples is going to do, but I know with UBO, it's we're entrepreneurs, and as long as entrepreneurship lives on. This business is going to be great. And uh, what does this new UBO group offer to the end user customer? So we all get what it did for your company, for you, for Jim, but really, why would a customer want to do business with UBO? Well, I think it's uh, the combined resources. It's the ability to, we, we've, you know, it's only been a couple months and we kind of had to hit a year push and uh, we had a kickoff and in the, in the, in the whole fire thing. But we're getting into some best practices, but the purchasing power, the ability to leverage technology, invest in more people um, is, you know, and, and some of the just things like having a help desk that is for call avoidance on service call, giving better service. Our philosophy, when Jim Sheffield, who I've known for 20 years, came to our office and he gave us a PowerPoint presentation on their company philosophy, and I go, Jim, did you steal that off our website before you came here? It was, it, it identically matches up because you know, our philosophy is we truly, truly care about our employees and our clients. And if we take care of them and serve them and they feel empowered and they do a great job, everything else kind of takes care of itself. And so you've been doing this since 1980. Um, how do you see the future in the dealer channel? Play it out for, for me in the future. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very optimistic about it. You know, you talked about some of the print volumes going down, but then you see the production going up. So production is one of our big focuses this year. Um, as, as we continue involved in technology, you know, the managed services is, has been a tough, another tough road. We lost before we started winning on that. And now we have a, a future there. And I'll give you an example. We took, like my account, or our account, Ray Morgan's account, they were spending at one time about $1,500 a month on copiers and printers and imaging. Well now, because they scan everything and they have less devices and less volume, they're spending about $500 a month. 
but we put them on a $2,000 a month manned services program. So our overall spend with that company is much higher. And so that's kind of our focus. And as we, you know, we have the ability to win large deals. We have the ability to integrate different technologies, services, NPS, document management, uh, you know, uh, BPO type things. So I think our ability to put our arms around the client and uh, keep that business and increase that business is better than ever. And are there any questions from you? We have about five minutes for Greg. Give me a chance to ask. Forever hold your peace, please. Greg, Andy, Cloud, Apple East. Uh, here you are, almost 40 year old company, and you really have started it. And uh, kind of a lot of money. How did, what, how did the whole how the team feel about the new energy from the it, it feels great. I, I've been on the road talking to some other dealers, and uh, we feel like we're a good avenue to partner. It's hard for these smaller dealers to grow. It's hard for them to invest in the money it takes. As you know, we're, as we grew, it, it was painful getting to this, the point where um, we were successful and we were able to grow. But some of the smaller deal, dealers are, they need partners like us. And uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, I need to delegate a few things. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I couldn't be happier for you know the, the future of our business and our employees. I mean, everybody that we, you know, you, you, you kind of fear that first meeting when they read about the articles of, you know, you know, our merger and, oh, did we sell? What's gonna happen to us? Well, every one of our employees that we talk to is excited about it because, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna keep our culture, we're gonna grow, it's gonna be bigger roles and responsibilities for our employees, and, you know, there should be there should be opportunities there. So, um, the routines, it's, 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 it's a little more, uh, uh, you know, we kind of have a, a, a new uh, a step going forward, and we're, we're excited about it. And you personally about wanting to contact the uh, acquisition Have I evolved into one? Are you really happy more now with private equity acquisition Well, I don't, I, our business is business as usual, really. As, as, we, uh, as we get into some best practices and, and maybe share with each other some sales philosophies, some things we do, some marketing, some service things, I think we'll, we'll improve. Um, but it's it hasn't changed our day-to-day -day business, and, and me personally, I'm running that, but I'm also out talking to dealers, and you know we feel like it's a great thing for Canon because I think we can help other Canon dealers grow their business with um, technologies and services and things like that that they have a tough time investing. In. Please, Greg Markle for these strategies. If you could answer, you don't have to, but. If you look at your classic hardware sale and consumable sales, percent of revenue of the business today versus services and other more amorphous things, what do you think that, what's that today and what will that look like in five years? Well, I keep reminding everybody we're still a copier company and uh, don't lose sight of that. <laughs> um, I, we're, we're probably with copier related sales and service, that's still probably 90% of our business. And, you know, maybe it'll, as we grow the other side, we, we feel like we're gonna continue to grow that business. We've made some commitments, um, some projections and budgets that our, our spend with Canon is gonna grow. Um, but that other stuff should grow too. So it may, both will grow and, and maybe, it'll, maybe it'll go to 85, 15 next year, something like that. <coughs> Yeah, it's, it's both a, a production where, you know, as Mason, and I think everybody would agree, it's feet on the street. And so we are hiring some more production salespeople. And, uh, you know, and then we have a big uh, focus on wide format. This, uh, Rob, this Colorado product is awesome. We're excited about that. That's going to be a big difference maker for us. And uh, so it's, it's the, the, the focus, we're doing some marketing and we're doing adding more people. And, uh, and so we expect to, Really double our sales in, in those two categories: wide format production. Thank you.